Hey Polish fans, it's Caroline again and welcome to another video here at Wild Moon Lacquer. In today's video, I am continuing on with my D-Stash series that is going through each drawer of my Helmer and deciding on which polishes to get rid of or cut from my huge collection at this point. This is part eight. This is only the second Helmer that I'm going to be going through, so we still have quite a lot to go through. And this drawer is going to be Crow's Toes, Cult Nails, and Cupcake Polish. I would be surprised if I got rid of any of these, especially the Crow's Toes. Crow's Toes is one of those brands that no longer makes polish and I cherish all of the ones that I do have from that brand. Cult Nails, the same thing. They don't make polish anymore so I have found a few of these, few and far between, and then I do have a number of them that I found in that huge estate hall of nail polish that I haven't added to my collection yet. I've sort of stalled out on that series but I do need to continue it and let you guys know the total numbers of my keeps and de-stashes and all of that. But the third polish brand in this drawer is Cupcake Polish, and this is another of my very favorite brands, so I would be really surprised if I got rid of very many from that brand, but we'll see how that goes. First off, let's go ahead and see what's on my nails. I did change it up since the last time I filmed. So on my left hand is one of my recent hauls from Schlee Polish. This is Gemini Moon, and this is a really beautiful dark vampy shade. As you can see, I have been wearing it long enough to get a little bit of tip wear there, but this is a very dark glowy nail polish so it has an actual dark teal base and then that beautiful multi-chromatic shimmer that has a purple to blue shift there's also some fuchsia that'll pop up plus all of that reflective glitter and then on my right hand is an older polish from glam this is it won't cost much just your voice that is a quote from ursula so i'm not sure if that is one of her disney collections or little mermaid collections or maybe villains collection um i want to say i got this quite a number of years ago and i'm just now getting around to wearing it but this is another very dark and vampy polish this is another instance where the base is so dark i'm not really seeing a ton of those flakies on the nail but i did only do these in two coats each but it is still very very pretty i love the dark purple base you can see it there right there where i didn't clean up very well but very beautiful glowy glowy polish all right, let's go ahead and dig into the D-stash. We're gonna do the crow's toes first. Like I said, I would be shocked if I end up getting rid of any of these, but this one is Death Warmed Over. This one is a beautiful multi-chrome with flakies and hollow glitter. So this one is a green to gold. I'm seeing blue and purple as well. Plus you have those hollow glitters and then you have iridescent flakes that you can see they're hiding in the base color not getting rid of that one. Next up, we have B on Wheels. This one is a red polish that has some scattered holographic glitter. This is another one where I have not worn it yet, but I have been warming to my red shades in my nail polish journey. I definitely liked the deeper wine shades, Merlot's, Burgundy's, Oxblood, that sort of a color family was definitely one that I warmed up to first, but these more cherry tones have definitely started to grow on me, basically starting at either the tail end of 2023 or the beginning of 2024. So I do want to at least get a chance to wear this one before I make my ultimate decision, but it is another beautiful polish. Next up is Beyond Your Fears. This was a Hella Hollow Customs from September 2016. And you guys, I need to pull this to wear this fall. This is beautiful. So it is an orange shimmer base. And as you can see, most of my crow's toes need a good shaking. But look at the interesting glitters in this one. We have blue hollow glitters. And I want to say there's two different kinds. Maybe a teal hollow glitter as well, or an aqua. And this beautiful orange shimmer base. If you can hear her, that is Willa begging to be let in. But yeah, this is one that I think would be beautiful for fall. Another very unique polish and one that I'm not getting rid of. That was Beyond Your Fears. Next up is Mentally Unstable. This one is a really beautiful mix of hollow and shimmer in a beautiful mint green. There it is on the nail dried. And as you can see, the hollow is spectacular. Mint is one of those shades that I have loved for a really long time. I feel like it's sort of one of the first shades of green that I really enjoyed. So I'm not getting rid of this one either. 
Next up we have Over and Over. This is a beautiful purple. If you know anything about me, you know that purple is one of my favorite colors. And this is another color that I really need to pull for this fall because it mixes purple with orange hollow. So this is one that I'm really excited to try. I still have yet to wear this one. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful combination. I feel like this is pretty unique to my collection, even as huge as it has gotten because of the mix of the orange hollow in this purple shimmer base. It is utterly gorgeous, so not getting rid of that one either. No surprise there. Next up we have, I think that might be Seleno or Solano? Seleno? There could be a number of uh, pronunciations of that, but this one, I want to say probably came to me in a mystery box, and it is a gold polish, but I'm also seeing it shift to some fall tones. So even though gold is not my favorite, I do see some deeper tones around the edges of the bottle that I do want to at least try on my nails and see if this is one that I like. It has the potential to be one that I could enjoy, even though it does have a gold face to it. There it is on the brush. As you can see there, you're seeing a little bit of bronze and some deeper tones there besides just a flat, bright gold. So I do want to give this one a shot. Of the ones that we've seen so far though, this one does have the highest potential for eventually being destashed, but for the time being I am going to hold on to it. Next up we have Helheim. This one is a beautiful flake polish in a purple. So no surprise here, I am keeping this one as well. As you can see there are multiple kinds of flakies in here. It is very, very pretty. It almost has like a blue undertone to that purple base, as you can see there on the nail. So holding on to that one. Next up, we have Nidavellir. <laughs> there are a lot of, I think, like Greek mythology names in here, and I don't know enough about them to pronounce a lot of them. Uh, this one does need a bit of a shake and maybe even some thinner, but this one is a micro glitter in a purple with a teal shift plus some teal micro glitters. The multichromatic aspect of this does shift to a lot of different colors. As you can see there on the nail, it is very, very pretty. So keeping that one as well. Next up, we have Hugen and Immunin. This one is a beautiful dark teal hollow with a golden glow. You see that golden glow? That sort of has a shift to a beautiful orangey red. That is very, very pretty. And look how gorgeous it looks there on the nail. Wow. That is very midnight teal. That is utterly gorgeous. So definitely keeping that one. Next up, we have Little Miss Cyanide or Little Miss Cyanide. This one is a sheer polish, a purple with a green shift. This is it on its own in the, the swatch behind it. And then in front of it, I do believe that is over... Uh, well, I was going to say over black, but I don't think that's right. I think it might be over like a teal there. So yeah, very beautiful color, keeping that one, not surprised. And then the last one that I have from Crow's Toes is Orange Blooded. This is another very unique polish. It is a deep navy with orange metallic glitters and orange hollow glitters. This is another one that I need to pull out for this fall. So I'm keeping that one as well. All right, next brand is Cult Nails and I know I have more from this brand, even in my original collection, which doesn't include the polishes that I got in that huge estate haul, but I do believe a few of them I might have ended up putting in my toppers section. So the one that is in this drawer is called Vicious, and this is a very beautiful berry-toned purple cream. So keeping this one, not only because of the brand, but because of the color, it is very, very pretty. So keeping my as of yet one and only individual polish from Cult Nails, like I said, the others I'm pretty sure are in my toppers. Now moving on to the biggest section here in the drawer, that is Cupcake Polish. Now a lot of these do need to be <laughs> shaken up as you can see, but this first one is called Sweetest Lullaby. This is a soft pink with a beautiful shifting larger particle shimmer. Most of what you're seeing is kind of a teal but I want to say there are shifts. There's also a hollow aspect, as you can see there on the nail. Now, this one may have faded a pinch. As you can see in the bottle, it might be a bit more purple than it was there when I swatched it. Let's go ahead and try giving it a little bit of a shake. Let's see what we can decipher. 
no, actually, once it's shaken up, that might not be too far off. And I do love that shift. Now, I've said it before pretty recently that I tend not to enjoy these softer tones. At the same time, I'm not really going to be doing a huge purge of them from my collection until I can decipher if that's just a this year thing. Because uh, as I've also said before, taste definitely varies wildly. And it also has a tendency of sort of constantly shifting and changing. So just because for this year, I wasn't really feeling many of the softer pastel shades, doesn't mean that maybe next year I won't be really craving them. So until I make that decision, maybe sometime next year, well, I'm going to be holding on to this one. Next up, we have another hollow. This is Mermaid You Look. This one has some larger iridescent glitters in a teal hollow. And look at that beautiful hollow flame. This is one that I keep adding to my summer racks. And then I don't think I've ever gotten it on my nails. But it is definitely one that I want to wear. So I am going to be holding on to that one as well. Next up, we have Heart of Iceland. This is a large particled shimmer polish. As you can see, the base is clear. That is that part up there that you're seeing moving around. So it does need a really good shake, but all of the color that you're seeing in this one is coming from those larger particled shimmers, and they are absolutely gorgeous. So we have this rose quality to it. There's orange and gold there at the edges of the bottle. This one is absolutely stunning and very perfect for fall. Also, because it is in a clear base, this has the maybe possibility of being used as a topper. I'll have to see how that ends up working out. It has been a number of years since I've swatched this one, so I don't really remember how sheer it is when I swatched it, but I love the shifts of colors in this one, so holding on to that. Next up is, I believe, my very first ever solar polish. This one is Game of Cones. I got this one through a D-stash or maybe even a mystery box. And you guys, this was sort of an eye opener for me into these brighter shades of green. As I mentioned before, before this, I was mainly into the mint shades, so much more soft, pastel, and delicate shades of green. Now, this one is a solar, and when it was in the solar transition it was this I think like a purpley shade but as you can see by the date it's only been guaranteed up until 2019 and we are currently in 2024 so by the time I got this which was a few years ago it was already well past its expiration date as far as the solar aspect if you're new to solars as a polish finish they are similar to a thermal in that thermals and solars do have a shelf life now that doesn't mean the polish itself will go bad it just means that that thermal or solar reaction will not be as reactive or in some cases just won't react at all but you still get the beautiful shimmers in this case, we have this electric, almost neon green. I do feel on my screen right now, it's coming off. It's almost like a honeydew green, but there is a pinch more brightness in person. And you have a larger particled shimmer that has pink and gold and a few other colors, maybe a little bit of a, a yellow lean in that gold. And I really enjoyed this one on, like I said, it was sort of an eye opener wearing these brighter greens and I really enjoyed it. So little surprise here, we are holding on to that one. Next up is another one that needs a good shake. This one is called Dallas. This is in their hollow line. Now, this might have been one of the ones that I got in a mystery box. Quite a few of the polishes that I got in my collection did come that way to me. This one, as you can see, is a beautiful, almost like rust leaning pink in a hollow base. And as you can see there, when it is condensed, look at how blazing that hollow is. I almost want to say I'm seeing a gold flash in this as well. This is another one that I have not gotten a chance to wear. So I do want to hold on to this. Maybe I should put it in the fall selection as well, because it has that rusty quality to it. So holding on to that one. Next up is another shimmer polish. This one is called Fallout. This one is a beautiful tealy aqua. I want to say the base is sort of gray, but technically, as you can see there, the base is clear. So all of that gray base, as I call it, is technically still coming from that shift. So it has that gray grounded quality to it. And then the flashes that you're seeing are a bit of purple and that aqua. 
So this is another one where I don't know that I've gotten a chance to wear this. I don't remember if I purchased this myself or if I got this through a mystery box. And this is one of the poor ones that was on top of my dresser when I had a meltdown of one of my salt lamps. So unfortunately the label is damaged, but I will be holding on to it, that one. Like I said, I'm, I would be surprised if I got rid of anything in this drawer and we are so far sticking to that. Next up, I think we're gonna stick to that theme of holding on to things. This is a purple called Atomic. And I mean, look at the flakes in this one. Wow. So yeah, this is definitely turning into more of a tour of this drawer, but this is one that I'm definitely holding on to. It is a beautiful, absolutely juicy shade of purple, full of these iridescent shifting flakes. You can see gold, pink, green. You can see, of course, the purple from the base flashing up there at the edges, as well as pink, if I didn't already say that. And I want to say you can see blue there as well. I don't know if that's just the purple base mixing with the flakes, or if that is a shift in the flakes, but wow holding on to that one for sure. Next up, we have some Berry to Love, another in their hollow line, and this is another red. So as you can see, their hollows are rather impressive. They have a ton of that linear flame to them. I love that bright purple that you're seeing. This one also seems to have a little bit of a gold flash to it with maybe a secondary shimmer in it. And this is a very beautiful, juicy shade of a red that has kind of a berry lean. I don't know if you can see that pinch of a purpley tone, but I'll be holding on to this one as well. Next up, we have La Luvia. I do believe this might have been a polished pickup. And you guys, this is another purple, this time sort of in the blurpily range with a larger particle shifting shimmer that is absolutely stunning. No surprise here. I am holding on to this one as well. I mean, just look at the colors. Wow. Yeah, absolutely jaw-dropping. Next up, we have another shimmer called Rum Swizzle. This is another in the orange family with more large particle shifting shimmer. Another one in very much need of good shaking. So this has a lot of beautiful shifts in it as well. It has that orange sort of a deep grapefruit base. And then you have that large particle shifting shimmer that shifts from gold to green. And then there is a pinky quality at the edges. I love orange that shifts into pink and I love all the different shifting shimmers in this one. So this is a keeper as well. Next up is another hollow. This one is called Berry Good Looking. Now I wanna say I do have two bottles of this because this one is very well known for fading. This was supposed to be a purple. And as you can see, this is not purple. It is a bright, brilliant pink. And I do love that for it, but I do want that purple. Did I end up with a second bottle? I want to say that I may have, but I may not have. I may have decided to wait on it until I had actually gotten a chance to like whittle down my collection because as I said, this does have a tendency to fade and I didn't want two faded bottles. And yeah, it does look like I may not have ended up grabbing a second bottle. But in any case, this is a pink version of Very Good Looking, the faded version. But I mean, as you can see, even faded, this is a brilliant, brilliant berry pink, like bright neon berry pink. It is still exquisitely beautiful. So I will be holding on to this one. I think I'm just going to be holding off on getting the actual purple version until I know for a fact I will be wearing it the moment I get it. Purples, especially with the bright quality that this one was, does have a tendency across the board, across brands, not just from Cupcake, but across brands, universally um, has a trend of fading, unfortunately. But I am happy to say that it fades into a very beautiful shade of pink. So holding on to that one. Next up is another flaky. This one is called Gamma, and we are dealing with another brilliant bright neon pink, this time in a squishy jelly with some flakes. As you can see, we're dealing with some purple and some blue in those flashes. There's at least two different kinds of flakes. Holding on to that one. Next up is another orange called Can You It Dig It? This one is a very beautiful, interesting sort of a carrot orange. And then it has this gorgeous contrasting shimmer. And this one is an aqua and there is a larger particle to pink fleck in there. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but you see that pink that's flashing up there. There is two different particles in here. So you're seeing the aqua and then the larger freckles across the bottle is the pink like micro flake or larger particled shimmer. 
So I love that in this base. And like I said, this type of an orange is very unique to my collection because it is sort of carroty or carrot soup. So I am definitely holding on to that one. Next up, we are dealing with an actual gold. This one is called Wait and See. This one is another one that has those large iridescent glitters. Now this is a gold. So this one has the potential to be de-stashed, but at the same time, it kind of falls into the orange-ish quality family as well. It's not strictly like a yellow, yellow gold. To my eyes, this is leaning more almost towards that like antiqued gold. It has that deeper tone, plus it has those iridescent glitters, and I love iridescent glitters, and it's a hollow. <laughs> so of all of the golds you could throw at me, this has the potential to stick. Now, again, like I said, of the cupcakes, this has the highest potential to be de-stashed because it is a gold, but I do want to give this a chance. I want to hold on to it till I have an opportunity to try it on my nails. I mean, look at the gorgeous glitters in there. It has beautiful warm tones. And like I said, I love the components that are that make up this polish. So I will be holding on to it until I can try it. So that was wait and see. Next up, we have another bright pink. This one is Mr. Mint, and this one is a, another bright, bright pink, sort of along the lines of the pink version of Very Good Looking and Gamma. I think I even got a couple of these at the same time. I think I may have gotten Gamma at the same time. So this time we're dealing with a larger hollow glitter, but still in that pink family, as you can see, the base is tinted. And here it is a little bit more shaken up, but I mean, look at that large particle hollow. It is so, so pretty. So holding on to that as well. Are we surprised? <laughs> no. <laughs> Next up, we have Flower Power. This is another shimmer-based polish with a very, very slightly tinted base, as you can see there. The main reason for this polish that I absolutely loved is the Shifting Shimmer in this base. It is very, very pretty. Predominantly, I feel like on camera, you're seeing the gold to orange, but even in that, I'm seeing some purple and like green or teal at the very edges and in this space it is very gorgeous so I don't think I've gotten a chance to wear this one either that's kind of a trend in my massive collection so holding on to that as well next up we have blue bonnet this is a polish pickup polish from 2020 any guesses on if I've worn this one <laughs> Spoiler, I have not. Um, I am getting better. One of the polishes that I'm wearing today is a recent purchase. And the two polishes that I was wearing before this, both were recent purchases. So I am getting better about it. But this one is a gorgeous blue with a shifting shimmer, pink to green to gold, one of my favorites. Now in this one, of course, the red is that pinky-ish quality in this base so it is very pretty this is one of those color families where i do definitely need to compare it not just to other polishes in my collection but see if i like this on because this was a color family or range that i was buying quite a lot of early on like i said this particular polish was from 2020 and more recently i've discovered that on my nails with the staining that i get even as short as they are uh, it, they don't stay blue. This polish does not stay blue on me. It changes to a greener color because my nails are stained yellow. I still have not figured out a way to prevent my nails from doing that, even though I always wear base coat. Uh, so I don't know if that's just because I'm prone to it or if it's because of the fact that I just always wear nail polish. But in any case, I do need to figure that out for myself and for my collection and see if these blue polishes are just better placed into other people's hands or if I need to figure out a way for me to wear them and then whittle my collection of them down. But in any case, I do want to hold on to that until I can figure that out. Next up, we have Boogie Down. This is another flaky polish in a gorgeous dark teal. Now, this is another instance where I feel like the base is actually clear. So here is the brush. You can see that base color there, the turquoise -y dark aqua. Seems to be coming from a shimmer, and then you have some multi-chromatic as well as, I think, iridescent flakes and I just dropped a big old dollop of this into my Helmer. Hang on. But yeah, I love the mix of the multi-chrome flakes with the iridescent ones and of course the base is beautiful so holding on to that one as well. Next up we have another hollow called Plum Perfect. This is a deep plum hollow. As you can see there on the nail it is very beautiful and linear. 
So holding on to that. Like I said, this is definitely turning into a tour of the <laughs> nail polish drawer. So hopefully that's okay. But next up we have a sure thing. This is a lavender polish with those iridescent glitters that I so love and a bit of hollow. So this is a softer color, but I feel like this is still somewhat saturated in its softness. So it shouldn't be a problem for me to wear this one. I do really like this softer shade of a lavender. So holding on to that one. Next up, we have Monica. This was from HHC. I don't know what year, but this one is a blue that has some purpley pink shifts as well as flakes. So I don't know if you can see, there we go. There's that sort of a pinky shift in person. It makes this come across as a blurple. So love that. That is a keeper as well. Next up, we have more large glitter. This one is called Garnet. That is my birthstone being a January baby. And this one has those larger hollow glitters, this time in a Garnet deep berry red base. Look at those twinkles. So that one is a keeper as well. Now this is another color family where I definitely need to do comparisons, but as I've mentioned in a few recent videos, that's essentially everything in my collection at this point. So um, up until that point, when I do get a chance to pull colors and do more comparisons like I've been wanting to for goodness years at this point, uh, I'm gonna still hold on to that until I can do that. So holding on to that. Next up, we have Overcome with Emotion. This was a polish pickup from 2022. Now, this is interesting. This was purchased probably by me in 2022. Um, now, I could be mistaken on that because, like I said, I did get quite a number of these through D stashes, but look at that. Now, it is technically, well, actually on screen, it's coming off more of, as a teal, but this is a green, less of a teal and more of a true green with shifting shimmer and the, those hollow glitters. So especially purchased back in 2022, this one sort of falls out of my normal realm and more into the colors that I've been falling into recently this year, sort of more interesting shades of green. So I'm very intrigued by this one, definitely holding on to that. Next up, we have another larger glitter. I think this time with flakes, this is Festivus. But this time we're dealing with a beautiful berry leaning purple with those iridescent flakes, hollow components, and I think there's iridescent glitter. There's a lot going on and this is a stunning shade. So holding on to that. Next up we have Gulfoss. This is another pretty unique one. I mean, look at the base. It's a tinted like forest green. We have a gold to orange shifting shimmer that has some green there at the edges and iridescent glitter. This is a beautiful combination, so holding on to that as well. Next up, we have more hollow glitter. This one is called Believe. This is so rainbowy and pretty. This time we're dealing with a very, very lightly tinted base with those hollow glitters in a few different sizes. This is in a lavender shade, maybe a slightly pinky leaning lavender. And yeah, beautiful. Love the hollow. Holding on to that as well. Next up, we have Retrograde. This is another one from Polish Pickup. Another one from 2020. This is a very dusty shade with a shifting shimmer. Now, this is very much along the lines of the kind of colors that I was really into back then. And I will say my love of dustier shades has at least waned, if not faded. And it's not that I don't love them in a way, but I'm definitely more drawn to the darker, more dramatic shades as of late. So this one, I'm actually going to put this one in the maybe D stash pile, our first one of the drawer. Can you imagine? <laughs> Next up, we have a more recent purchase. This is Cool Cats from Polish Pickup, February of this year, 2024. And this is a pink crelly with some like mylar type flakes as well as multi-chrome flakes so very fun and again pretty unique to the ones that I've already shown you this is also staying in the collection the base of this one is sort of this somewhat dusty but still vibrant shade of like a bubblegum pink so keeping that next up we have keeping it real this time we're dealing with a murky shade of teal that has a shifting shimmer that goes from red to green to gold and actually surprisingly this is another one that i think is going to go in the maybe pile i could probably do without this one yeah 
So actually, I think it's not going to go in the maybe pile. It's going to go in the de-stash pile. Shocking. We have our first official de-stash. All right. Next up, I think we have another gold. This one is called Miami. This one definitely did not get purchased by me. This came to me through a mystery box. I think I got a number of cupcake polishes that, that were in whatever collection this is that had like city names in it. And this one is a deep orange hollow. There, I think you can see better. That's the separated part of the bottle that has that deeper orange quality. But let's go ahead and see the brush and see what color it turns out. So yeah, sort of a light orange. So yeah, you know what? This actually does have more chance of me wanting to try it because I think that tone comes through a bit more once it's mixed and it's less of a brilliant gold. So we're going to give it a shot. We're going to see how it goes. But of the ones that we've looked at so far, where's that other gold? Is that right here? Yeah. Wait and See and Miami have the highest probability of being de-stashed because they are gold. But the reason they're staying is they either have components like this one does, that was Wait and See that has those iridescent glitters, or the hollow component. Now, whether or not I need both is also up to debate, <laughs> but we'll keep both of those for the time being. All right, next up we have here or there. I want to say there was a whole like oceanic collection. I think Wait and See might have been in the same collection, but this one has those iridescent glitters, this time in a soft nude base. And this is actually another one that I think might go straight into the D-stash. I love the iridescent glitters, but I have a number of polishes in this color family of nudes that I think I would like better on my skin tone. So that one is actually our second in the de-stash. Next up, we have All Washed Up. I think this is another in that same collection, more of those iridescent glitters, this time in a teal blue base. This one is more of a, maybe less of a teal, maybe more like a dark denim. Yeah, look at that color. More of a dark denim blue. That is very pretty. So this has that hollow flame plus those iridescent glitters. So that is staying as well. Just a couple more. The next one is another bright pink called Los Angeles. This is another that came to me through that mystery box. This time a hot pink hollow. Now, how does that compare to Very Good Looking, my faded bottle? Very Good Looking is actually a brighter shade, a more deep saturated pink. By comparison, Los Angeles is a, a bit more lighter in color. And you know what? I want to say I have a ton of pink hollows and I do already have very good looking, even though that is a faded version. So I think if I were digging into my cupcake polishes and going for a pink hollow, I would be fine just pulling out very good looking and I would probably be fine getting rid of Los Angeles. So yeah, three de-stashed. Who knew? Okay. <laughs> Last but not least, we have Unrequited Love. This is from the Vault 2018. This is probably another one that I got through a de-stash because I definitely hadn't quite discovered cupcake polish specifically in 2018, especially in the Vault. So this one is a very dark, plummy, bruise purple. It has a number of different components in it. It does need quite a good shake. But it has like some silver flakes. It has some hollow. It has a like bronzy shimmer. This is very, very pretty. And look at that flame. This is gorgeous. This is right up my alley with a color that I can absolutely see myself wearing. So we are closing it out, keeping our last polish. All right. So three that went to the D-stash. That's kind of a surprise to me, but yes, three cupcakes that are going to the D-stash. And we had a, another one that I did put in the maybe pile that was retrograde. Let's take a peek at this one again and see if this is one that I'm going to de-stash or keep. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna have to swatch it. And yeah, in this first coat, it is a little on the sheer side, but as I mentioned before, when I'm swatching on these clear swatch sticks, this is not the perfect way to see how they look on the nail, but there you can see one coat and that is two coats. Actually, two coats might be pretty good on some nail lengths. And I think this is a bit darker of a dusty shade than I was thinking. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. 
Okay, that gold in this that shifts to that pink, and I'm seeing some orange as well, is very, very pretty. But it is just a shimmer. You know what? I think I'm okay letting it go. It has been in my polish collection since 2020, and I have yet to wear it. I know I've said that with a lot of the other ones as well, but because this ended up in my maybe pile, you know what? We're going to just hack it. We're going to cut it. That leaves us with four polishes from this drawer in the D stash. Not a lot, but like I said at the beginning, I really wasn't going to expect any of these to be D stash. So the fact that I could pull four polishes at all to D stash is pretty good. That leaves the rest of the polish staying in my collection for the time being. But as I did mention, there are a number of polishes that I still need to try and see how I like them on my skin tone. But for the time being, they're getting a reprieve. And actually, I think there were yeah three golds three golds getting the reprieve and sticking around. In any case, hopefully you guys had a good time checking out another drawer of my Helmer in what is supposed to be my D-Stash series. Let me know which polishes were your favorite or if you have any other favorites in these three brands. Again, we are dealing with Crow's Toes, Cult Nails, and Cupcake Polish. Hopefully you guys had a good time. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me and looking at beautiful polish. If you're new, do think about hitting that little subscribe button down below. That way you don't miss out on any of my new videos, and I will see you in that next one.